When Final Fantasy Tactics was released in 1997, fans and critics alike were blown away by its rich narrative, which featured intricate relationships between the various characters. They were also impressed by its presentation, which featured a score composed by Hitoshi Sakamoto as opposed to Noboru Uematsu, and its detailed and fluid gameplay mechanics, which operated at 60 frames per second despite using CD-ROMs, which were notorious for their slow read rates. By all accounts, the concept Hironobu Sakaguchi had come up with when working on Final Fantasy VI had not just been delivered upon, it had exceeded expectations, and what made the feat even more impressive was that Yasumi Matsuno, Hiroyuki Ito, and the rest of the development team had achieved this by building on only some of the concepts Sakaguchi had entrusted to them. As in truth, much of the game ended up being quite different from what Sakaguchi had envisioned, a result of Matsuno and Ito choosing to follow their own path and being allowed to do so. With hindsight, it was the correct decision on both accounts, but when looking back at the variables in play at the time, it was also a very bold decision. After creating Ogre Battle while still working at Quest, Matsuno had enhanced his reputation by creating Tactics Ogre, a game that helped to define elements that would become fundamental within the tactical roleplay genre. Even though everything, from the outside at least, was going well for Matsuno at Quest, as the two Ogre Battle games had been huge critical and commercial successes, he ended up joining Square because there existed the prospect of working with Sakaguchi, who at the time was one of his idols. That Matsuno decided to throw away many of the concepts handed to him by the person he idolised spoke volumes for how driven, confident and methodical he was as a storyteller and director. But it's also telling that Sakaguchi allowed him to do so, despite Matsuno being a fresh face at the company. It's quite well known that as part of the process, Matsuno created huge relational diagrams that connected each of the characters together, a version of which has been recreated by a content creator called Orange Fluffy Sheep. This kind of approach was not uncommon at the time, but what was uncommon was the level of depth Matsuno had gone to, and it resonated with Sakaguchi. Going far beyond just establishing simple relationships such as friend or sibling, Matsuno instead went much, much deeper, highlighting specific emotions the characters would feel towards each other and how they might respond to each other during social encounters. Matsuno also chose to deviate away from the typical themes present within Final Fantasy games that had been released up until that point, as instead of creating a scenario that had its primary focus on a group of humans fighting against monsters or other supernatural beings, tactics would introduce conflicts that existed between the various factions, and there would even be scenes included that saw humans killing other humans. These factors enabled tactics to do something unprecedented deviate away from the typical formula seen within the main number games to not just establish a foothold within the tactical role-playing game subgenre, but to build upon what was achieved by Tactics Ogre to become a best-in-class game that would lay down the blueprint for other games to follow. This not only proved that Sakaguchi was correct to try and merge Final Fantasy with complementary genres, something that led to further experimentation with games like Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon and Final Fantasy XI that blended Final Fantasy with the roguelite and MMO genres, but due to the way Matsuno worked, it also provided a solid framework for future properties related to Final Fantasy tactics to exist, especially as this approach had already been evidenced by his previous works. Even though Matsuno left Quest before it was seen through, plans were already laid out for significant portions of what would become known as the Ogre Battle Saga, a huge franchise that would have its story told out of sequence, much like Star Wars. It meant that despite releasing as the first and second games in the series, Ogre Battle, The March of the Black Queen, and Tactics Ogre would serve as the fifth and seventh chapters in the overarching story, with Ogre Battle 64, Person of Lordly Calibre, releasing as the sixth chapter, based on plans laid out by Matsuno prior to his departure for Square. When working on Tactics, even though there was never any promise of Square granting the green light for a sequel or any other related property, it didn't stop Matsuno from taking a similarly expansive approach when working on the game, and by working with Ito, it saw the creation of an entire world that would become known as Ivalice. Never before had such depth been applied to the lore of a Final Fantasy game, and this was perhaps because they were always designed to be self-contained entities. Their worlds were almost always unnamed in the initial sense, with some retconned in later on, and the various factions that existed would be limited in scope, with the conflicts that existed feeling superficial, only there for plot progression, as opposed to something more deep-rooted that would help to create history and substance. NPCs were also created in a similar fashion, with very few having backstories of note that extended beyond the small segments of the narrative they were required for. Ivalice was designed to be different, and this difference was noted by Sakaguchi. 
Up until that point, Sakaguchi had adopted a pretty strict policy when it came to the Final Fantasy franchise. Each entry would be standalone, there would be no sequels and no spin-offs based on existing lore, at least in video game format. Expansions would instead take place through the production of supporting materials, with prominent examples being Final Fantasy II Labyrinth of Nightmare and Final Fantasy Legend of the Crystals. The former being a novel written by Kenji Tirada that rewrote the story of Final Fantasy II, making some pretty significant changes along the way, and the latter being an OVA that served as a follow-up to Final Fantasy V. But due to what had been created with Ivalice, Sakaguchi sought to take advantage of the wealth of material created by Matsuno, Ito and the wider development team, and he would do so by expanding the world further through the production of a sequel, which would be given the provisional name of Final Fantasy Tactics II. With hindsight, it seems like a logical decision, and now, some 24 years after Tactics released, there are those who would be desperate for a follow-up. But at the time, it was a huge departure from the standard approach, and it led to some issues, the first of which was staff availability. There was an appreciation that any follow-up would need to be released pretty soon after so that they could strike while the arm was hot, but neither of the two main creative forces were available, and neither were their teams. Matsuno had always been keen to explore new experiences, and even the original Ogre Battle games were in very different genres. This desire had not just evaporated since joining Square, and as a reward for the success of Final Fantasy Tactics, Matsuno was granted his wish to create an original title that would become known as Vagrant Story. Hiroyuki Ito had also been assigned to a new project, which would become known as Final Fantasy IX, and it meant that not only would neither of them be available to oversee Tactics 2, very few of the resources who helped to make the original game would be available to work on the sequel. As such, Sakaguchi decided to helm the project himself, and so it could be delivered in parallel to both Vagrant Story and Final Fantasy IX, and still release on the PlayStation, he sought out an external partner to assist with development. Due to the restrictions placed around the project, it was decided that instead of building upon the visual style created for the original game, focus would instead be placed around streamlining asset production, and this led to wholesale changes being made. It would see a much heavier focus placed on the production of 2D assets, and it led to the isometric system from the previous game being completely canned, with a 2D hexagonal grid system developed in its stead. Jobs would still have a prominent part in the game, but based on what we know, there would have been a focus placed around confrontations between individual characters in addition to larger conflicts. But as with so many projects, development on Final Fantasy Tactics 2 didn't ever get that far, and this was for numerous reasons. When speaking to Nico Nico a few years ago, when he was appearing to play through the original Final Fantasy Tactics, Matsuno revealed that the project first started to encounter difficulties due to how busy Sakaguchi ended up becoming, perhaps because he was also attempting to help out with Final Fantasy IX, as well as laying down the groundwork for Final Fantasy The Spirits Within. It led to Sakaguchi asking Matsuno to take charge of Final Fantasy Tactics 2 alongside his work on Vagrant Story, and this ended up being quite difficult to manage, not least because he would now be directing two teams, one who he was comfortable working with, and one who were completely new to him. With split focus and numerous issues happening behind the scenes, working on both games became just too difficult to manage, and although he didn't get into specifics on the livestream, Matsuno did reveal that Tactics 2 ended up being cancelled for numerous reasons, with there being no willingness to try and salvage the project, in its planned form at least. There's nothing to say that certain concepts were not repurposed though, and placed into other properties. This was a consistent theme with Matsuno and many of the other creators at Square and subsequently Square Enix. For example, Matsuno revealed not too long ago that he used a concept from the cancelled Vagrant Story 2 as the basis for a storyline in Final Fantasy XIV, and it's not like the entire Tactics franchise died after this decision either, as Matsuno oversaw the creation of Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. This was then followed up by a few evil East based games that Matsuno was not part of, and the sub-franchise has been dormant since Final Fantasy Tactics S, but with the raids in Final Fantasy XIV being so well received, who knows what will happen in the future. And on that note, are you still holding out for hope that Final Fantasy Tactics 2 may exist somewhere down the line as either a game or some other kind of material, and would you support a revival of the Tactics brand? Be sure to let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this brief look into the situation surrounding why Tactics 2 was never made, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Alright guys, this is Daryl signing out. I'd like to apologise for my bad voice, I've unfortunately got a cold, but I'd like to extend a thank you for everyone for putting up with it and listening all the way through if you're here.
I'd also like to extend a big thank you to all of our Patreon and YouTube membership supporters, especially Raining Eckham, Benjamin Snow and Gregory, who are super special Onionite supporters. And of course, a big thank you to everyone for watching this video. I'll see you all again soon for more Final Fantasy goodness.